such a beautiful, beautiful view we have. Good morning, Valley and Mountain. So happy to see all of you. Welcome home. You are loved without condition. If you didn't know it, now you know. <laughs> are you ready to worship? Are you ready to celebrate? Are you ready to co-create? Me too. It's going to be a wonderful, information, impactful day. And so we're going to sing a couple of songs here. If you know them, sing along. If you have the YouTube clip, go ahead and share it and let somebody know about the wonderful things happening here at uh, Valley and Mountain. How many know when you have joy, love, and peace, nobody can take it from you? It's the truth. If it's deep in your heart, nobody can take it. Oh, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. You know, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Let's sing it again. Oh, And it's really good to see y'all. It really is. It's a beautiful Sunday. I'm really glad to see y'all. You guys are in for a treat. Again, not just for this gathering, but for the whole day. There's, there's some things going down at Valley Mountain that you guys really want to be a part of. Well, welcome, everyone. My name is Jared Galloway, and my pronouns are he, him. I just want to welcome you into this space, wherever you're at, wherever you're coming from. We are a church that says we are from the valley and on the mountains, and there's ways that we find ourselves throughout the week and the various seasons of our lives that fluctuate very often. And we feel that no matter where you are on those valleys or whether it be the mountains, that you call this place home. Yeah. That wherever you're at, that you can re recognize that this is a place of refuge, of peace, and there's a community around you that cares about you so much deeply. So we want to welcome you again just into this space. And we're going to light a candle for that very reason, to welcome everyone. And there's people viewing online. If I think there's a camera around there if you want to wave at the back, somewhere in the back. Um, and we're going to light a candle just to welcome them and y'all into the space. No matter where you are on life's journey, Place home. La, 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 
Hello, good morning, everybody. This is a medium full house. This is great. <laughs> it's so nice to see you all. My name is Emma. I use she and her pronouns. I'm going to share a little bit just about the space that we're in here physically and also online. Hello, online people. Good morning. Nice to see you. Um, if you uh, want to make a name tag, the, just like mine, they're pretty cute. They're on the um, table just as you come in, and you'll notice that there is some green felt, some orange felt, some red felt, so that we can make name tags that kind of indicate our comfort being um, close to folks in this time of COVID that we're in, still in. Um, so if you are, um, please notice those name tags, please respect them, um, and use them uh, to set your own boundaries with folks. Thank you. Um, thank you for wearing a mask over your nose and your mouth. We have folks in our community with significant disabilities. It's so important to create a sense of radical hospitality here together by continuing to wear masks, especially right now in this post-holiday peaky time. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for respecting that. We really appreciate it. If you need to grab a mask there um, on that welcome table, there's kid size, grown-up size, and extra large size. So pick a size out that works for you. Get a cute color. There's some tie-dye ones. They're great. Um, so that's name tags and masks. In the lobby, you're also gonna find our part participation station. That's where you can sign up for the Roots cohort that's happening now, which is an introduction to Valley and Mountain's core theology, core values, and is a uh, three or four week series that Rev Seku and Mick Summer are leading together. So we're two weeks into it. It's not too late to join. You'll find a QR code to sign up for that in the lobby. Uh, there's also an email list that you can handwrite your email address on or scan a code. There is an email newsletter that comes out every Friday. It is chock-a-block full of all the sign-up links you need for everything, connecting to small groups, connecting to the Roots class, upcoming Bible studies, all sorts of information. Our community care corner, we have two new babies in our community, and we also have some families that are struggling with some illness and some resettlement. So you'll find all the ways to connect with um, those elements of our community there. So that's all out in the table. Uh, the bathrooms, if you need them, are just out in the lobby in the way that you came in. There is a gender neutral, accessible bathroom um, up here. And then if you go down the stairs or out this ramped exit over here, that's where you're gonna, uh, and you go out the ramped exit and then to the lower level, that's where you're gonna find the bathrooms. Um, exits, if we need them, are the way that you came in. There's three doors back there. And then there's a door to uh, my left and also my right. Please come up and um, use the altar however you like. We have um, a prayer vase for you to put in prayers, gratitudes, petitions, longings. We're gonna have a chance in a minute to say those out loud together, but if you prefer to write them down and add them to our beautiful growing rainbow prayer vase, it's right there. There's some colorful paper, paper up here on the stools and also out in the lobby as well. So please come up here. This is your altar. Use this space. Feel free to bring your body up here, move your body around, take a break outside. You can dance, uh, you'll see kids running around and exploring the space, and please feel free to also explore the space yourself. We are so glad that you're here. It's so good to see you, and welcome. Thank you, Emma. Emma makes things go around here, so the first gratitude's gotta go to her. <laughs> Thank you, Emma. <laughs> my name's Mercedes, my pronouns are she, her. I, can you tell I am excited about today? I am excited about what's happening here at Valiant Mountain. One of the things we do on a weekly basis is we stop and we reflect on what we're grateful for. Maybe it's the things that we are lamenting about. Maybe it's the things that we need prayer and support around, but we always stop every single service and, and do that every celebration. Um, so some do it in, inside and some, some people wanna say it out loud and so this is your opportunity to do that. I'm gonna do mine as bookends today. <laughs> I won't bore you. Can you hear me? Yeah. And then online, I want to make sure that we acknowledge those who are online. So my first one is for our guest speaker. Thank you for taking the time out to come and speak with us today. We are so excited about what you're going to be saying. And we know you got, I hear that you were doing meetings in your hotel room. So thank you for taking time to do that. I know you have something to say to us. Anybody else have one while I'm checking online? Have a gratitude, a lament, a prayer request? We'll pray for you. Yes, ma'am. What, Lucas, you're a playwright? If you didn't hear that online, Lucas um, wrote a play for mom for their birthday, and that is amazing. I want to hear about that. And you also smashed it during Christmas time. I just have to say that. Yeah. Okay, anybody else? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I can't hear you. What? 
Vantage, okay. Let me see if I can get that in a click. So the best fan at your wedding, did a 23 and me, found out about his heritage, and got to spend Lunar New Year, sounds like, with his birth family. That is amazing. Gratitude for that, absolutely. Anybody else in the auditorium? Yes, Beth? I love all that language. Let me see if I can get it. Beth just said that they emailed a co-parent um, as a petition to the other parent about their child, Macy. And so praying for and requesting wisdom, grace, and protection for their baby girl. I love them. Okay. Yes, we will do that. Um, I, I saw another hand up, but let me get one from on here. Susanna says, gratitude for the Valley and Mountain Roots meeting. Yes. With Rev Seku and Make Summer for Health and Renewal. Um, for the earth, the animals, and all. Amen. I am enjoying that root series. If you have not made it to one, it is such a, such a good time of just co-collaboration. I'm learning so much about what it means um, to be here at Valley and Mountain. So I invite you to that. But thank you, Susanna, for, for highlighting that. I was going to say that too. So uh, Amy, did you have one? Okay. I just volunteered you. Yes. I wish the camera could just pan right there <laughs> the kiss me cam. We're so excited about that. Anything else you want to say? Are you good? You good? Yeah. We are so happy for you. We love you and love wins. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Come on, stage. Let's yeah, go. I do. Yeah. I'm, I'm just so grateful and happy to be alive yeah. and to be able to go to the mountains and enjoy cross-country skiing. Mm -hmm. um, and then to be able to come home to my family here yeah. in this community and, uh, and all the joy that I see when I look out at you. Mm. Just very grateful for that. Amen. Well, we are grateful for that, Elder Sarah. You are just a rock star. <laughs> That is so cool that you're so active. It inspires me every every day to get up and go walking. I, you you did that for me, so thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all ready for my gratitude? <laughs> In my tradition, the right Reverend Stephen Hardaway Wonder wrote a song for this occasion, and it's Happy Birthday. <laughs> happy Birthday, Rev Seku. Thank you for all your guidance and all of the love you give us. And I'm gonna teach you the song real quick. You ready? It goes. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy. He doesn't like this, but I don't care. not for the same faint of heart and we love you and I know we don't like the light shown on you but it, it's too late and it's inevitable <laughs> and you shine that light in our lives every week can we say amen to that amen. Amen. amen amen every week we get to sing a song about gratitude and so if you know it please sing it loud and strong with us amen we won't sing it for long but we just want to reflect and just give that, that gratitude right back up to God so God can pour it right back on us. I am grateful for the things that you have done. Yep. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we won. Oh, 
to praise you, Lord. And it's flowing from my heart. Flowing from my heart. Say it with me. It's flowing from my heart. Flowing from my heart. favorite parts of celebration as they're coming I'll just say a really quick prayer Thanks, God, right now. Oh. spirit thank you so much for this time togetherness thank you for bread for the journey and strength and health and we love you and we just say thank you amen Thank you all. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. Oh, I'm seeing so many of you. I haven't gotten to say good morning to you directly yet. Hi. Good morning. Welcome here. Morning. 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 I'm Jack. How many eye contacts can I make? Hi. It's nice to see you all. Um, my name is Summer. Uh, you might hear me also called Mix Summer. I'm X. Um, my pronouns are they and them. I get to support the children and youth ministry here at Valley and Mountain. Um, and I'm really excited. We're in a new year. We've been telling some stories together. I've been running around up here, and we've all been running around downstairs, or many of us have been. Um, and it's nice to see y'all. I'm excited to see what the next few weeks bring us as we're part of this um, month of coming back together and finding belonging and spaciousness um, and greeting one another again, saying hello um, this Lunar New Year and this Gregorian New Year as the calendar is turning um, for January. So thanks. Um, I brought up today the... oh. Okay, um, I brought up here today the women's lectionary for the whole church. You've heard us talk about this a little bit if you've been in some of the Bible studies or if you've been wondering how are we picking the scripture that we read occasionally um, on, on Sundays. It's, it's from this lectionary here. Um, and there's a story in here that Sky Dragon was really excited about. And so um, it is from Psalm 18, 2 to 11 and 16, 19. And see if I can hold both these at the same time. Um, I'll let Sky Dragon talk about actually why this was so exciting. Oh, thank you for not hiding from us today, Sky Dragon. If you don't know, sometimes when Sky Dragon comes up to greet us, I like to hide. Mm -hmm. Sky Dragon's always going under the altar and behind the curtains and places I can't fly. But this morning, Sky Dragon wanted to tell a story because often I'm telling stories up here. In Psalm 18.2, you ready, Sky Dragon? Okay. The rock who gave us birth is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Holy One, may she be praised. And from my enemies I shall be saved. The snares of death encompass me, the rivers of wickedness assailed me, the snares of Sheol encircled me. Ooh, Sheol, that's the name of a place, isn't it, Sky Dragon? Mm-hmm, Summer, I'm telling the story. Oh, but where is that place, Sky Dragon? Does anybody know? Has anybody heard of that place? Clementine? Sky Dragon lives under and came from a castle 
It's true, Sky Dragon. And Sky Dragon is talking about this rock, this, this earth womb that Sky Dragon came from. And there's something, something under and over. And they're talking about all these kinds of places. Summer, can I keep telling the story? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, Sky Dragon. Mm -hmm. Okay. In my distress, I call upon she who hears. To my God, I cried for help. From her temple, she heard my voice, and my cry came before her to her ears. Sky Dragon, you're talking about a, a woman type of God, a, a God who hears, a God who hears when we're in distress, when we're crying. Mm -hmm. A God who listens, a God who can be of the earth, the earth that shudders and quakes, the foundation also of the mountains the mountains that went up and were shaken because of her anger and smoke goes up from the nostrils, consuming fire from her mouth. Oh, of course you picked a God with a breath of fire. Burning coals breathed forth from her. She spread out from the heavens and ascended thick darkness under her feet. She mounted up on a cherub and flew sore from the wings of the wind. She made darkness her veil around her, her canopy, dark waters, thick clouds. She reached down from on high, took me, drew me out from a multitude of water, delivered me from those who hate me, and they were mighty. But she was mightier. They confronted me in the day of my calamity. Yet this sheltering God, the sheltering God, she was my support. She brought me out into a broad place. And she did this because she delights in me. You see, McSummer, I shared this one because you say that God is in all of us, and maybe even in a dragon. Can you believe it? This God, a womb of life, a clay that maybe humans were made from in Genesis, this womb also breathes fire like a dragon. You see, we're all God. If we can be a part of the loving community together, we can create some sort of divinity, some sort of love. We can call it all kinds of things. Find the stories that speak to you and protect each other when you tell those stories. Amen. 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 Thank you. Well, Sky Dragon, thank you so much. I love to hear your many voices, and I'm excited that we get to share so many stories together. I know we'll hear lots today. And for those of you who want to come downstairs with us for the children's ministry breakout, we'll be playing some freeze tag down there or freeze dance. We'll see. Um, we'll take a vote. And then um, we'll have some puppets out and some, um, what are those, scarfs and flags. Yes, thank you, Sky Dragon. Scarfs and flags to dance with. Um, so we'll see you there. And if you want to stay upstairs, there's coloring pages in the back, and there's going to be great conversation for all ages up here, too. Okay. Thanks all. Thank you, Sky Dragon. Thanks, Miss Summer. Each week, we send our children off with peace. Peace, shalom, shalom. Peace.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kiva halik. Alhamdulillah. My name is Reverend Osaji Foseku. My pronouns are he, him. I am 52 years old today. Uh, I didn't think I would live past 35, so everything is gravy for me now. Um, I am privileged to introduce uh, someone who I've uh, shared mutual admiration with for some time. You know, at a moment um, um, filled with so much uh, hatred and anti-immigrant sensibilities, uh, it is enough to not be born in this place and attempt to make some solace for yourself. And then you add on top of that to be Muslim uh, in the shadow of two decades of a war on terror. To be Palestinian uh, a people whose Oppression is not unlike those of us in the U.S. In fact, I was in Palestine for about 15 minutes. And when they, I'm, I'm looking around and I see the segregated roads. I see the houses that have been de demolished. I see and hear the fear in mother's voices. And I said, oh, y'all the niggas got it. Now tell me where you party, because I know you can't live under this kind of oppression and not party. And oh, I partied in Palestine. We are honored uh, to have uh, my friend and sister Linda with us today. I think the first time we met in person was at uh, a benefit for Mr. Belafonte at the Apollo Theater. Uh, but I knew their work, uh, having worked against the war against the precious people of Iraq alongside Michael and And so I knew their work followed them. We, uh, uh, they came to Ferguson to see about us uh, and with tear gas in the air. Uh, Palestinians know a little something about tear gas. But I, I called them uh, the day an article came out in the New York Times that said that they had been, that Linda had been the victim of Russian bots as well as attacks from the right wing. And so I called, I said, Linda, well, if they hate you that much, I want you to come preach for me. She holds a BA from Brooklyn College at 25 years old, became the executive director of the Arab American Association of New York, founded Muslims for Palestine, as well as empire, em Power, the largest online Muslim social justice organization, served as the one of the co-chairs of the Women's March. You remember all them hats y'all used to wear. It's one of the uh, founders of the Women's March, uh, the largest single day protest in the history of the United States. Uh, above all, and perhaps equal to being from Palestine, she is from Brooklyn, America's favorite borough. Why don't you give them a big old valley and mountain welcome to our friend, Linda Sarsour. Thank you. Thank you so much, Valley and Mountain. 
Linda Sar store, she, her, hers, and I am just, I'm overwhelmed. Um, I'm just like, just absorbing the, the love that you receive as soon as you walk into a space. Um, and for me, um, I don't always know where I belong. And I don't always know, as I walk into spaces, um, how I will be embraced. And so I just want you to know that you've created a beautiful community here um, that just, get, when you were talking about joy and peace, I felt peace. There was something, I just felt like I could just sit here. I don't have to think about who's around me. I don't gotta do all the calculations in my mind that I do often in many spaces that I'm in. And so thank you, Valley and Mountain, for, for welcoming me here um, today. And I wanna say to my dear friend, Reverend Seiku, um, first and foremost, happy birthday. And while on people's birthday, we're supposed to be gifting them, I want you to know that you are a gift and you are a gift um, to us and to our movements and to um, the many spaces that you uh, grace. And as a Muslim, um, I don't really learn about other people's faiths through their books. Um, I don't, that's not how I learn. I learn through practice, I learn through action. And when I wanna learn about the, the, the beautiful tradition of Christianity, it is people like Reverend Seku who tell me and share with me and show me what true Christianity is. Um, standing on the front lines with the most marginalized people, the most heartbroken, downtrodden people, using worship with your feet versus sitting in a building and talking about God and who God is and what God wants for us. Um, true faith um, is being with those that God has created that need us in the most vulnerable times. And that is exactly who Reverend Seku is. So you are blessed to have uh, a man like Reverend Seku be a leader here in this community. You know, I come here today um, to Seattle, to Valley and Mountain, and, and just want to say this invitation to me is a courageous one. One day, you know, in the future, 20, 30 years from now, we'll look back at this day and you'll say, I don't know about y'all, but we had that lady in our space. Um, and, and it's funny because that's how history works in this country, right? We don't realize um, the true leaders, the people who have sacrificed the most to make this country truly the greatest nation on earth until they're far gone. And I wanna live in a world where I give flowers to those who are here today with us here, that are still here. And I want to make sure that Reverend Seku has his flowers and the many people in Seattle who are on the front lines defending the rights of immigrant people and undocumented people and supporting refugees and, and, and declaring the sanctity of black life, that these people are celebrated now and that we don't just celebrate them and, mo and mourn them when they're no longer with us. And as you know, we've lost a lot of comrades in this movement, a lot of people that we've lost, whether it be to police violence or to terminal illnesses. Sometimes we've lost them to suicide. They have decided that this place is not for them, that this place hasn't loved them the way that they have loved it, and they decided to take their own lives. So we have to take care of our people when they are with us. You know, I come here to Valley and Mountain unapologetically Muslim American. I am very proud to be a Muslim American. Uh, I come here to you also unapologetically Palestinian American. I am proud of my Palestinian heritage and lineage, and I, I say to folks, well, I reject this idea that I have to be less of who I am to make other people comfortable. And to be here at Valley Mountain, to come to a space where you could be all of you, you could bring everything about you into a space and feel like you could be a whole human being, that's the kind of world that I wanna live in. I wanna live in a world that I could be my whole self, you could be your whole self, and you are celebrated for being your whole self. You know. We live in difficult times. Um, and for me, people say, you know, I don't know how, you know, I'm, I'm relatively young, but I'm not that young. You know, I've been doing this work for over 20 years. And a lot of people say, I can't even believe you're still here. I can't even believe you didn't pack your bags and say, listen, I did my part. I'm gonna go find something, to, something else to do with my life. And the thing that has kept me here is faith. God has kept me here. Because the work that we do as we fight for the most vulnerable people, I don't do that to please the people. I do that to please my Lord. And knowing that our Lord created all of us, I believe in the God of Abraham, I believe in your God, your God is my God. And when we see suffering around the world, a lot of people will say, but why does God, why does God make people suffer, right? How, why are people hurting? I believe as a Muslim that God is testing those of us that have some privilege. God is testing you with the blessings that he has given you of what are you willing to do 
for God's creation. When we walk over homeless people in Seattle, does God want us to walk over these human beings that need us, that need our blessings to share our blessing with them? God wants us wants to know what are you going to do for these refugees and these asylees at the border? It's interesting the conversation that we have in the United States about immigration and about asylees and refugees. Jesus was a refugee. Moses was a refugee. Our prophets were refugees. Imagine living at the time of Jesus Christ and saying, nope, this guy can't come in here where we live. No refugees allowed here. We, we don't need people coming into our communities. Imagine us blocking our blessed prophets from coming to our communities. That's what we're saying today. When I think about being a Muslim and a lot of people, and unfortunately we live in a country that has decided that they get to define who the Muslims are. And for me, when you see me show up in a movement space, I show up because I'm a Muslim. And in Islam, a lot of people will say, and if you brought anybody to your space, they will say, Islam is a religion of peace. And that's cool, because I believe all Abrahamic faiths, I believe all faiths are religions of peace. But that's not what moves me about Islam. I'm not, I'm not proud to be a Muslim because Islam is a religion of peace. I'm a proud Muslim because Islam is a religion of justice. In fact, in Islam, we are taught that you are to stand up against injustice, even if it's against your own parents. Imagine that, that I could stand up to my mother who birthed me and call her out if she is engaging in an act of oppression or injustice. This country has defined my beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. We watch all this you know, analysis from folks that are not Muslim, that have not practiced this faith. And I will say to you that my beloved Prophet Muhammad, in the tradition of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, he was a human rights activist. He was a climate justice activist in his own right. He taught us that God gave us and blessed us with the earth, with the oceans, with the plants, with the animals, and that we are to be stewardess of this earth, that we are to take care of the blessings that were given to us. And look what we have done. We have destroyed those blessings. You know, our beloved Prophet Muhammad in his last sermon before he died at a very young age said that we are not to judge people based on the color of their skin or based on their ethnicity or their geographic location or where they're from. We are to judge people by their piety, by their goodness and their good deeds. And so for me, Islam is an anti-racist religion. It is a racial justice religion. Our beloved prophet appointed a black man centuries ago and said he is the man that will do the calls to prayer. And that was Bilal. And when one time some companions came and said, I have a daughter for marriage. I need you, prophet, to find me a husband, a good husband for my daughter. The first man that our beloved prophet Muhammad brought forth was Bilal. He was a black man and said, this pious, kind, compassionate, generous young man, this is the husband that your daughter needs. When I think about even things like women's rights, and a lot of, there's a lot of people who have analyzed Islam and about what Islam says about women's rights and the rights of women in Islam, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, encouraged the education of women. In Islam, they say, if you raise two good, righteous daughters, that's your ticket to heaven. Now, I'm sure we love our sons, too, but they didn't say two sons. They said, heaven lies at the feet of your mother. We love our fathers, too. But imagine that heaven, for us, lies at the feet of our mothers. You know, It's hard to live in a country where you feel like you just have to defend yourself at every moment. Where you have to walk into a space and have to explain to people that what you heard is not right. And this is who I am. It's exhausting. And I know a lot of marginalized people feel the same way. There's so much emotional labor into having to explain to people over and over again. And I say to people sometimes when I come here to say that my God is a big God. My God is a compassionate God, a merciful God, an all-forgiving God. And my God loves everybody. Because guess what? My God created everybody. 
And so how is it that we, and I listen to religious folks across this country, how do we talk about God and call God the most beneficent, the most merciful, kind, the most generous, the most loving? God is love, people will say. But in practice, we marginalize, we vilify, we hate people who are different than we, although we do believe that God is the one that created all these creations. And so I struggle with faith people. I really do. I struggle with Muslims. I struggle with Christians. I struggle a lot with the Christians, all kind of Christians. The Christians, yeah, I know. That's why all of us here are here at Valley and Mountain. Um, I struggle with Jews. I struggle with everybody. And not every body of every faith, because there are incredibly kind and compassionate Muslim people who believe in peace and justice and equality and equity. And there are incredible Christians across this country who believe in equity and equality and justice and compassion and love. And there are incredible Jews across this country who believe in justice and equity and love and Sikhs and Buddhists and all kind of other people. But oftentimes, some of us are looking in tradition to find the things, right, that move our hearts. And sometimes when I read scripture, I wonder if everybody is reading the same scriptures that I'm reading. And I wonder how and what is it about us that we take scripture and we start interpreting it in ways that make us feel comfortable. Faith is not about comfort, right? That's not what it is. If, if your faith is used to oppress others, it is not faith, it is oppression. And to use faith to justify the harming of others, that's not faith. And so when I think about the ways in which we talk about faith in this country and use faith to strip women of reproductive rights, to strip marginalized people of, of their rights, or the ways in which we get to decide who gets to enter our country for sanctuary based on their faith or because they don't have the right faith, this is not faith. And I reject those people. And it is those people who are in opposition to me. When we talk about right wing, oftentimes they are right wing e evangelicals, Christian Zionists, right wing Zionists. And I call those people in. I call those people in to look at the examples and extract not just words, but actual, I mean, we all have the stories. We share the same stories across Abrahamic faiths. You know, when I went, I went to Ghana this past year, and Ghana is a beautiful country, and I just want people to know Ghana is more than enslavement. Ghana is a country of culture, a country that has a long and rich history. I met beautiful people in Ghana. There was something that was very disturbing to me in Ghana. Everywhere I looked, everywhere. White Jesus was everywhere in Ghana. Blonde, blue-eyed Jesus all over Ghana. Right in front of all the black churches is a white Jesus. And of course, you know, it's colonialism, so many isms that we have that have plagued and destroyed the world. And I think, and I thought to myself, do, again, do people read the same scriptures? In Islam, we say that Jesus was a dark, coppered-skinned, woolly-haired man. Sounds like a black guy to me. Or at least a really dark-skinned brown guy. And when I look in different scriptures and I, you read this, it's the same description pretty much across all the faiths. But somehow, that's ignored because someone wants to make a figure that makes their comfort, makes them comfortable. Again, that's not what faith is supposed to do. In fact, faith is supposed to challenge us. It's supposed to challenge us to be better human beings, to be better to one another. And we've lost a lot of that essence, especially in this country. You know, when I saw Reverend Seiko on the streets of Ferguson, the young people in Ferguson were struggling. They were outside going up against tanks, against tear gas, against the government that was telling them you don't matter. And in fact, it was almost might as well have said that they labeled them enemies of the state because if they weren't enemies of the state, you wouldn't be sending 
high-level artillery and sending tanks to the streets of Ferguson. I didn't even know there was a place called Ferguson before Mike Brown got killed. Let's talk about small, like, community outside of the, like, greater St. Louis area. And I went there, and Reverend Seku saw the riot gear, the assault weapons, literal tanks, the tear gas that was being used against young black boys and girls who were standing outside and saying, we matter. Mike Brown's life matters. Mike Brown's murder really, it just moved me and shook me in a different way. And it showed the level of, or the lack of humanity. When I think about a young black boy walking home from a store, and what's interesting here, it doesn't even matter what happened at the store before he got killed by Darren Wilson. He got murdered and laid out in the, under the August sun, hot sun, for four hours, four and a half hours, laying there in a pool of blood. They didn't allow his mother to come to see if he had or say goodbye to her child, touch her child to see if he was even still breathing or even had a pulse. So for four hours, this young black boy sat out in our country, in the United States of America, not in Palestine or in Iraq or in Afghanistan, right here in greater St. Louis area. And then four and a half hours later, an SUV showed up. Never an ambulance, never a nurse, never an EMT worker. An SUV came, picked up Mike Brown off the floor and threw him in the back of an SUV like he was just a bag of rocks. I was radicalized. I was outraged. And I was like, I'm not going to stand for this. And I packed my bags and I went to Ferguson. And you know who else would have went to Ferguson? Jesus would have went to Ferguson. And as a Muslim, many of you know in Islam, we refer to Jesus as Isa, that's his Arabic name, and he's a very revered figure in Islam. In fact, if you read the holy book of Muslim, the Quran, we mention Jesus more than we mention our own beloved prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. We dedicated an entire chapter in the Quran to his pious mother, Mary. And so when I read about Jesus, even through the lens of the Muslims, Jesus was rebellious. Jesus decided that he was going to be with the people that nobody else wanted to be with. He was with the misfits, the people marginalized in that society. Jesus was a healer. He saw people hurt, sick. He wanted to heal people. Jesus would be at the front lines of every movement we have in America right now. Because Jesus is love. And wherever there was love that was missing, Jesus would be there. He didn't care who he pleased. He didn't care who was mad at him. He didn't care that the people who were in opposition to him were more powerful than him. And in fact, could take his life if they wanted it. He was outside, unapologetic, with little resources, using everything that he had, everything that God gave him, to make the society in which he lived a better place. And yes, while the Muslims, of course, you know, there's a place where we all kind of go on one line and the Muslims kind of, you know, when it comes to Jesus, so we're all on the same page. We still do believe that Jesus was put to be crucified. We believe that part. So that is an image in Islam. What we believe is that God loved Jesus so much that he replaced the physical body of Jesus with someone else and that Jesus was taken, his soul was taken up to the Lord. That's what we believe as Muslims. But that still means that Jesus was still willing to sacrifice his life. The question is, are we willing to sacrifice our lives for those who need us the most in these moments? And we just came off of Dr. King Day. And that's a holiday that bothers me every year. We, you know, it's supposed to be a holiday where we all sit around and we commemorate this great leader in our nation that reminds us of the sacrifices of the civil rights movement. And I'm not going to lie to you, I don't look forward to it at all every year. Because it's a time where we sit around and we whitewash a man of God who was moved by his faith to demand the sanctity of black life in America, to demand that black people be treated as whole human beings as God intended. 
and we we're in a country where everyone from the right to the left to everybody in the middle, people who oppose the very values and principles of Dr. King and the civil rights movement, which, which was mostly a church movement, to say what a great man Dr. King was, but only great with the parts that make them feel comfortable. And I want to remind people as you continue your work to be on the front lines for those that, you, that need you most, Dr. King died. He didn't die. He, Dr. King was assassinated. And when he left this earth, he left with very few friends. Don't let him lie to you. One, th one little homework assignment I'll give the folks at Valley and Mountain is there's an incredible documentary called King in the Wilderness. This is a documentary that tells you about the last 18 months of Dr. King's life, where he suffered anxiety, depression, shows you clips of him going to Chicago and other black people telling him, don't come on over here making trouble. We don't want you in Chicago. We don't want you here. There were parts of the documentary where Dr. King almost knew that his time was up. He prophesied, he knew that his assassination was coming. When he did his last sermon, remember that? That last speech that he did. And he said, I went to the mountaintop and I saw the promised land. I may not get there with you. He knew that. I may not get there with you. He, that night, if you listen to that speech over again from the perspective of Dr. King knowing that that was going to be potentially at some point the last few days, maybe weeks that he had, and he was right. In that same documentary, you will see an image of Dr. King and Stokely Carmichael marching together in, one, in the same protest. And in the middle, there's a white reporter telling Dr. King, you're over here preaching nonviolence, and this is what you do. And Stokely Carmichael is saying, well, maybe at some point, I don't know how I feel about that nonviolence business that he's talking about. But what was powerful is to see two men with potentially two different theories of change still marching together, still together with the same end goal. And so I call on all of us today to think about what it is that we're willing to sacrifice. What is a blessing that you have been given that you are willing to share with others that don't have what you have? Are we willing to speak truth to power? Are we willing to emulate the characteristics, the mannerisms, of our beloved prophets, including Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. Because I know that if we all said, what would Jesus do? And where would Jesus be right now? We always know that Jesus would be on the front lines defending the most marginalized people. And so I appreciate Valley and Mountain for you having me here today, for welcoming me into your space as a sister in faith. And as someone who wants to live in a country where everywhere is Valley and Mountain where all of us can walk into any space and feel like I could just put my back straight, right? I could hold my head held high and I don't get questioned for who I am, that I could be my whole entire self. So may God bless you. May God bless all and protect all the people that you love. May he protect us from all the diseases and all the illnesses and all the evil that is out in this world. And may he make us the stewardess of justice. May he make us the people that light this world with love and peace and most importantly, justice. Because remember, you can't have peace without justice. Thank you so much. I told you, wasn't that amazing? Thank you so much. We enjoyed everything that you said. We're gonna sing a quick song Woke up this morning with my mind, and it was straight on freedom. I woke up this morning with my mind, and it was straight on freedom. I woke up this morning with my mind, and it was straight on freedom. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'm walking and talking with my mind, and it was still on freedom. Woke up just walking and talking with my mind, still on freedom. I'm walking and talking with my mind, 
Every time, I come into this space, hello. Every time I come into this space, I'm reminded how much talent we have in this building. Truly, both from the musicians, the singers, to all of you, we have a lot of talent in the building. Speaking of talent, um, we say each week, Valley and Mountain is a community of co-creators, not a group of collectors or consumers. We pool our resources, and together we do so much more than we can ever do apart. 
You can make an offering again, or you can pledge, make a pledge right now. If you, make, if you like, you can make an, a gift at the offering basket. And you can also do that when you come up. When you come up for a communion, you can make a commu uh, pledge that way. Or you could also, if you want the resource, you can also pull into the, I think we call it the um, Community Mutual Aid Fund. And you like to pull resources there, you can as well. There are multiple ways to give. A spiritual home for you, you can also become a pledging member. And there are ways to do that in the bulletins behind you in the, in the back space. We're now going to say our offering prayer. Wellspring of life. Help us to use our offerings to make peace in our communities. Set us free from fear, hoarding, and hostility, and renew in us the desire to become open-handed and open-hearted. Teach us to know what is enough so that all may not just survive, but thrive. While you're giving, we shall overcome. We shall one more stanza we are not afraid we are not afraid we are not afraid we are not afraid today oh deep in my heart family. So good to see you. We have Leo here helping us. Do you want to say good morning? Good morning. Good morning. I want to say thank you to Linda yes, thank you. for stirring our spirits and for challenging us to heed the call in how we are to show up yes. for our community and how we're to show up in the world. There's a lot for us to chew on yes. with what you shared with us today. And every Sunday, we gather around this communion table. It's one of our traditions here at Valley and Mountain. Um, we practice an open, welcoming table because we really believe that Jesus called all of us here to this table and that Jesus deeply loved and deeply called all of us to come fully and wholly and authentically in just the way that we are. So as you come forward today to this table, know that you are loved, that you are welcome, that you are embraced, that this is a table reminder of God's unconditional love for each and every one of us. As you come forward, we'll have two lines on either side of the stage. We have non-alcoholic grape juice and gluten-free crackers. When you come forward, if you would rather not partake in the elements, but you'd love to be blessed, just cross your hands over your chest and we'd love to bless you when you come forward and pray for you. But before we do that, we have a story to tell. Long ago, Jesus arrived outside Jerusalem. The occupied people of the land went outside to greet him. And together, they defied the emperor through the art of revolutionary street theater. Jesus went to the temple, turned the tables, and welcomed people who were sick and disabled, who had been excluded from entering. They came to the center, their voices were heard, and it was a holy place. The night before he was executed as an enemy of the state, Jesus gathered his friends to sing and pray 
and to share a meal that would build their courage for the journey ahead. He broke bread and poured the cup and said, do this in remembrance of me. As we do each week, let's reach out our hands and bless this communion feast together. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit into us and these gifts, that through this cup and bread, we may know that we are beloved without condition. Transform us, make us one body with you and with one another. Come on home, home to me, and I will hold you in my arms, and joy will be there will always. When you are ready, all things are ready. You can come forward. And if you need to be served at your seat, please raise your hand and someone will come by with the elements. My table, return to me. Come on home. Come on home. And I.
One more time. Come on home. So, so Linda, in the Catholic tradition, there's this notion of uh, a transubstantiation. So once you bless the elements, it actually becomes the body and the blood of Christ. And so after it's been blessed, you can't throw it away. And so Leo has a high Christology, and he's making sure that we keep it. <laughs> Teaching all of us while he does it, yeah. What a wonderful service today. Thank you all for being here. Can we give another round of applause and thank you to Linda, to our tech team, to Mick Summer, to our musicians and our singers. We have the most amazing band in all of Seattle. I'm so grateful. Um, there, our service isn't, isn't over, so we want to encourage you to stick around. We have some coffee and some treats on the way out, and uh, we want to encourage you to stick around and fellowship and hang out and get to know one another. Uh, we do need a few folks to help us with cleanup today, so if we can get about five hands to help one and two and three and four and one more, one more. I got you. <laughs> five. We got five, and Emma's in the back and can get you all set up for the cleanup. Um, we do have some... Uh, Announcements. So for folks that are going to be sharing announcements, you can come forward at this time. Um, we want to remind you that in the lobby, there is a place to sign up for kids' ministry. So if you're interested in learning more about how to get involved with our children's ministry, please go into the lobby and, uh, and you can get more information about that. We also want to encourage you to leave your name tags on the table as you're leaving so that you can use them when you come back next week. And then just a few announcements to share. Right. And we'll first have Megan. Okay. Okay. Hi, good morning, Shukran, Linda. That was amazing. Uh, so Valiant Mountain is um, increasing our work, supporting uh, people that are on the margins. And one of the ways we're doing this is through our immigration justice organizing. So the, the biggest area we are doing this work right now is um, helping advocate for the closure of the Northwest Detention Center in Tacoma. So some of you heard from Maru last week from La Resistencia. Um, and so if you would like to learn more about that, the next solidarity event is actually next Sunday at 1 p.m. Um, so there's a sign up. You can talk to me. I can make sure you know where that is. Um, and uh, we are also in the future going to be exploring how can we practice radical hospitality in regards to immigrant and refugee communities. So if that is something that's interesting to you, it's, this is a great group to start getting involved in. Um, we have organizing meetings for the immigration team on the third Thursday of the month. And we also have a Google group where there's a ton of resources. If it's an area where, like me, you have a lot to learn. Um, tremendous resources that um, Jared and Michelle and others have put together. So feel free to talk to me if you're interested and um, consider joining next week. Thank you so much, Megan. Can we give a round of applause for Megan? Thank you so much and our immigration outreach team. And then um, we are getting ready to launch our small groups, our beloved community small groups, which is going to be an amazing opportunity to really get to know each other, to meet on a regular basis, and to read 
um, the book by Henry Now on Life of the Beloved. And so one of our leaders is here, Jared, and uh, I asked him to come and share a little bit about what, what we can expect. Awesome. Again, if you don't already know me, my name is Jared. I'm going to be one of the small group leaders. I'm really excited for this. Um, we are doing a lot of things contextually in Seattle, but we can also be pretty flexible for people at various parts of Washington. Um, we can make sure you feel connected in this space. Um, I chose to want to be a small group leader just for the sake of, I love community here. I know that kind of transcends to a lot of y'all as well, which is why we're even planning to have this. And I think it's gonna be a really good time. Um, I think mine personally is gonna be every other Wednesday, but I think we're, again, we're solely flexible to like whatever accommodates y'all. Because again, this is community. So I wanna make sure everyone can attend to the greatest potential. There is a sign up code. So again, in the lobby, you can find that QR code and, um, and link up to that and then sign up. Um, and, and we'd love to get you connected with our beloved communities. We have a couple more uh, announcements. We're gonna talk a little bit about the Roots class, Rev, and also tonight's service this afternoon. Can you share more about yeah. that and then close us out? Yes, ma'am. Hey, these musicians is cooking. <laughs> um, we have Roots class. Uh, Mick Summer and I have been teaching a, a class about the, val the values of Valley and Mountain. It is at 6.30 on Tuesdays. Please drop in. No reading materials required or anything. Just come and hang out with us uh, on the Zoom, uh, the church link Zoom that you use to get into service. Uh, tonight, or uh, this evening at 3.30, uh, Linda will uh, be speaking again as a part of our Set Us Free From F Fear series to be talking about what it means to stand against uh, Islamophobia and white supremacy. Uh, Wasat, a Muslim community, Cherry Street Mosque, uh, Kadima, uh, and a number of other institutions are co-sponsoring, so y'all ought to come on back out uh, and we're gonna have a good old time. And I think that's it, but before I go, Linda, we do this thing, it's be here. It'll be here tonight, Maggie. Um, Linda, will you come, just come up? Uh, and, um, so, uh, you know how we do. Come on. And you can stretch your hands. Audu Bilal Mini Shaitan Razim Bismillah Nirakman Nirahim Alhamdulillah Rabil Alameen Nirakwan Nirahim Elikyom Medin Yakana Abuduwa Yakana Stain Adena Sarat al Mustakin Sarat al Azin and Anta Lahim Gary al Makdubi Alahim Bale Dolim I mean, we ask that you give blessings and protections to this, our sister. Wherever she goes, we pray that you might meet her there, that you might be a hedge all around her. We claim now that no weapon formed against her shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against her in judgment shall be condemned. That she may feel persecuted, but she is not forsaken. Though she may feel cast down, she is not out. That she is fearfully and wonderfully made in the very workmanship of you, O oh God. We pray for protection on our head, on her family's head, on all of those who are around her. Give her strength, and may she always know that she can come home to Valley and Mountain. All of this we ask in your name. Amen. Hallelujah, oh, since I paid my burdens down, glory. 
I feel better, so much better. 